When companies grow, so does complexity. And one area that can become very messy very quickly is product and price lists. You start off with five products, know them off the top of your head, but before you know it, prices have changed, new products have come in, and your old system no longer works. Maintaining a price list becomes painful. Before we can automate your invoicing and your inventories, what we need is a consistent, reliable, maintainable, and scalable pricing and product system. A SKU system. And SKU stands for Stock Keeping Unit. Businesses often see this as a mysterious string of numbers, but it doesn't need to be confusing and it doesn't even need to be numbers. You need to set up a system that suits you and your business. And once you've sorted your SKU system, this opens up a whole new world of barcodes, QR codes, where you can bring the physical and the digital worlds together. The main features that a SKU system needs are that it needs to be unique, consistent, scalable, decodable, and helpful. Let's start off super simple. Let's imagine I sell stationery. Who doesn't love a bit of stationery? I sell only four products, a black biro, a HB pencil, a notebook, and a pack of crayons. The number one feature of a SKU is that it needs to be unique. I'm going to give the first product a SKU number of one, and then plus one for the remainder. This is great. They all now have different SKU numbers. Uniqueness, done. The second most important thing is consistency. And one area that we want consistency is in the number of characters. Imagine we have more products and we keep adding. Once we hit 10 products, we're going from one digit to two digits. That's not consistent. And also not scalable or memorable you are not going to remember what number 11 is. So let's go back. First of all, let's change these figures to have a proper formula behind them rather than adding one each time, as that formula can break when inserting and duplicating rows. What we are going to do is add a formula called row number, which is row and then the cell in brackets. So equals row B2. And then let's take away one for the header. And then scroll that all the way down. This will also work much better with the next stage, which is ensuring that we keep the number of characters as three. We do this by telling Excel or Google Sheets that these numbers are actually text and that the format should be three characters long. So 000, zero, zero in speech marks. Close the bracket, drag that down. This will keep your SKU number as three digits and you can have up to 999 products using this SKU number formula. We can also add SKU dash to the beginning, put it in quotation marks and add the AND symbol. This is handy as it stops any software turning it back into a number. This looks better and more SKU-like. I also said a SKU number should be decodable and helpful, basically more intuitive. What would be amazing is if we could look at the SKU and tell what the product is, as in what category, what color, and what pack size. Let's break out our four product into the parameters that best define and characterize them. First, we'll start as broad as we can. Let's go category, pen, pencil, notebook, and crayons. Our next distinguishing feature is color, which will be black, HB, black again, and then red, green, yellow, and blue. We can then add in our unique number, so just that row number that we had in the SKU over on the right, so copy that and paste that back over. Hang on, actually, I also want to add in pack size, so let's cut, so control X, V, the unique number on the right, so that we can add in pack size here. And our pack sizes are going to be a pack of five, a single, another single, and a pack of four. Now we have the makings of a nice SKU number with four sections. We can create our SKU by putting all of this information into a string. Let's go back to our SKU, and inside we can replace what we had with 
our category and put a dash in speech marks and the colour followed by the dash in speech marks and the pack size with the dash in speech marks. Always add them together with the and symbol, ampersand. And then don't forget to add in the unique number on the end. And we probably don't need that skew at the beginning. Drag that down. Great, this is handy. We know exactly what the products are. We have a pen, black, pack of five, and it's our first item and it's unique. But it's really not consistent and it's way too long. What we need to do now is put this information in some kind of code system. So let's summarize each attribute with short codes. We'll keep it to three characters each and create a simple lookup table. First of all, to create a lookup, I'm going to put an equals to the category and drag that down. And then our category code will be pen, pencil, notebook, crayons. We can do the same for colour. But you may notice we have black in here twice. And this is meant to be a summarised list. So instead of doing an equals, what we should really be doing is creating a unique list with the function unique. So let's go back to our category and type in equals unique and select everything that is in column B. This can't fit because it's got text underneath. So let's just delete that text and we can see that our categories are the same. We can cross check our category codes, which are the same pen, pen, pencil, pencil, notebook, notebook and our crayons. Now remove color and do the same thing here equals unique and then put in the whole of column C. Great, we've only got three colors now. So that is a summarized list. And then we can put in our color codes, which will be black. I'm going to put in HB1 so that it's three characters still and mole for multicolored. Now for pack size, we can do this the same way with a unique and a lookup. But what I would be tempted to do in this case is to future proof and force consistency from the beginning. I'll put in my pack sizes here, single, pack two, pack three, drag down. When we get to pack 10, change this to P10 to keep it to three characters long. And then it's not dragging down properly. So type in P11, then drag down to about pack size 20. And then we can go back over to our pack sizes. And to keep these consistent, we can change it to a drop down. Remove these and insert drop down, drop down from a range. Select the column that has the pack sizes. You don't really need the header, so you can go from row two. Okay. Advanced options, change to arrow as I don't like the chips. And you can see that we've now forced some consistency. You can select your pack size here, copy and paste that drop down so that the drop down covers the whole area or you could apply to the full range and then you can select your pack sizes. I think it was single pack two, single pack four. Actually, top one was pack five. This is feeding into our SKU numbers, which are looking better, but we still need to add in the codes for our category and color. Let's add in two columns so that we have space for our two codes over to the left of pack size. It's added in the formatting. So let's get rid of that by copying and pasting over a blank cell. Then we'll add in our category code and our color code. What we're going to do is we're going to look up each product attribute using an X lookup. So first our category code, we want to look up our category in this column and then I want it to give us our code, which is in column K. Enter and drag down and this will give us our category codes, exactly the same for color code. We're going to have an X lookup and we will look up the color in column C and look for that within our lookup table column and then ask it to give us our code so column look up column L and give us column M. Drag that down. And you might not like those NAs. 
if you want to get rid of those NAs, we can wrap all of this in an if error. So if error, let's stick that whole formula in the if error, and then if it's an error, if it's an error, give us nothing in speech marks. We can do that with our category code as well. Stick it all in a if error and give us a nothing if there is an error. Drag down. Now let's look at our SKU. We'll replace the long text with the codes. So category to category code, B2 to D2, color to color code, C2 to E2. And drag that down. There you go, a 12 digit SKU. Four lots of three letters should be good enough for most businesses. And this looks much better, consistent, unique, decodable and helpful. We also wanted to make sure that it was scalable. So let's test if this is scalable. I can now add new products. Maybe I'll add in a white notebook. The only new attribute that I need to add that's missing is white. Let's scroll over to our right to our lookup tables. You can see white is already in here because we have a unique list. So add in the code WHT. Scroll back and we can see that our colour code has now been added. Drag anything down that needs to and our new product and SKU has been added. Now let's add in some pricing. Let's insert a column over to the left here, but then I actually want to freeze my panes because it's getting hard to see everything. Over to view, freeze the top row and freeze the first column so that we can scroll on the right and still see our products. Now we can add in our price column. Price, £1, £1.50, £5, £2, £5. Then add the formatting. Format, I'm going to choose dollars. Never type in the currency. Sometimes Google Sheets or Excel gets confused and sees this as text rather than a number and it can cause errors down the line. Now imagine our black biro needs to go up in price due to supplier costs. We can put in the product again, but we will get a new SKU number and can add in a new price. So the back end sees it as a new product and we can look up this new product with the updated price and the customer never needs to know that the price has gone up. Remember, you have the unique identifier as the last attribute, so you will always get a new SKU automatically. You may want to add a column with notes, if you're like me and forget exactly why you've got a new product in a week's time. But for now, there you go. We've got all of the information we need. A couple of extra tips is you should always put your SKU in uppercase. For example, if somebody accidentally put in a lowercase l here, you can't tell if that's a L or a capital I. Trust me, this can cause all sorts of trouble. So let's put in upper here and everything in brackets, and this will turn everything into uppercase. And this is now pencil. Try to avoid using lowercase, but also put this in to catch any errors. Instead of having packs like this, you may also want to have row numbers here. So we can steal the row number formula, copy and paste that, and you can have a numeric code rather than uh, than character code. You may prefer to use numbers rather than letters if you've got lots of products or it's hard to come up with three letter codes. We can also change the color codes to be numbers and change our categories to numbers too if we really want to. This pack size drop down and look up is actually no longer needed. After a bit of playing, I think the best technique to show you is just having the pack size column in column F just as a number so that we don't need to look it up at all. But then in our SKU function, we need to use our little text function again so that we turn our pack size into a three digit code. Great, we now have a numeric SKU number and we've tested that everything's scalable. We've got a consistent, reliable, maintainable and scalable SKU system and a price list. Personally, I prefer to have something that you can understand just by looking at it, but it's completely dependent on your products and also your preferences. To take this one step further, we're going to call this tab our price list, and then we're going to create a new tab and call this sales. We're going to add our sales by SKU number. So let's type SKU number here. We're going to add a drop down, drop down from a range, 
select all of our SKUs, this whole column, and change this to start from row two and all the way down to the bottom. Then we're going to add in our product, the price and the quantity. That's quantity, right? Then we're going to add in our black notebook, a white notebook and a black pen. The last one, which is at the higher price. Then we can add in our lookups. Let's look up our SKU and give back our product. If you've set this up more cleanly, we can just have one lookup that puts in multiple columns. But for now, let's add in our price with a separate lookup. So look up our SKU number and give us our price. Let's imagine we sell five of those, two of those and one of those. Price looks wrong. Did I put in the right number? I've looked up column G. It should be column I. So replace G with I. So we get price. Brilliant. And now we can do our value, which is price times quantity. Hopefully you can now see how this can easily start forming the basis for your invoice and also link up to an inventory. I'm planning on the next video to be about creating an inventory system, potentially using QR codes so that we can scan products in or out, which I think could be quite fun. In fact, this video was meant to be about creating an inventory system, but what I realized was most people were actually struggling with their product organization and they needed a system to organize their products first. So hopefully this was useful. Make sure you subscribe if you want to know when the next videos are out. Thank you for watching. Check out the description below to see how to download the templates.